my friends and welcome back to our food fiesta. Okay, today we're doing something a little bit different. We are going to be talking about kefir. This is something that we have been making as a family for probably almost 18 years. So I thought I would share with you how we make it and tell you a little bit about what it is. So let's get started. Okay, so this is kefir. Kefir is a fermented milk drink and it is a little bit like yogurt, I guess, but in my opinion, it is a lot more beneficial to you than yogurt. This is jam packed, loaded with probiotics and nutrients. And this is it. Like I said, it is like a yogurt drink. However, it is fairly sour. It can get very, very sour if you leave it ferment for too long. You can now, in fact, buy kefir already made in drinks in most supermarkets. However, they are nowhere near as good for you as proper homemade kefir. They add lots of different things to it and it isn't going to be anywhere near as healthy or good for you as making the real stuff at home. So let's get started and I'll show you how we make it. Okay, so the actual finish um, process of it, the actual drink is called kefir, but this is where it all starts. These are the kefir grains. Now they've got the appearance of cauliflower, but they are very bouncy with almost a rubbery consistency to them. And this, you need to look at this as your starter culture for producing kefir drink. If you were to make sourdough at home, you have your starter kit, don't you? Well, this is the same kind of thing. In fact, you can actually make um, kefir bread and I have done it and it is delicious. You can also um, make different cheeses from this as well. I've never tried doing it, but that's something that I would like to do. But yeah, this is your starter culture for producing the kefir drink. Now, some people may think it is a cereal grain, but it is not. It is a grain-like thing. <laughs> it is a grain-like colony which is made up of yeast and lactic acid bacteria. And there is approximately around 60 different um, bacteria in this. And these create all the... Um, fantastic um, goodness, the probiotics and all the goodness that you need to um, help with a healthy gut. The grain's lactic acid bacteria turn the milk's lactose into lactic acid and that is what gives it its sour taste because kefir can be very sour. In fact, it can be extremely sour, especially if you leave it to ferment for too long. So it does need to be done uh, fairly regular to make it more pleasant to drink and when it is done correctly it is very nice and refreshing. So the microorganisms in the kefir grains they multiply and they ferment the sugars in the milk and that is what turns it into the kefir drink and that is what we are going to be showing you how to make today. Now there is lots of research out there talking about all the benefits of kefir some call it like a, a super food, a super grain. <laughs> and there is tons of information online for you. Um, however, I'm not going to go into depth on that because I'm, I'm not a professional. I just make this at home for myself and my family. So I suggest if you want to find out anything in depth about it, then you go and do a little bit of research yourself so you can find out whether you think this will be beneficial for you or not. But we're going to get on and make, show you how to make this from scratch. Okay, so there are a few things you're gonna need in order to make your kefir. Obviously, you're gonna need your kefir grains. Um, these you can usually find, if you look on the internet, you'll see them for sale, or if you go onto Facebook groups, you can find someone that has some, because this does, it multiplies so much and you get it grows and grows so if you know someone that makes it then ask them because they will have plenty to share 
Okay, so the other things you're going to need is uh, a large plastic jug or glass jug, a funnel, a sieve, a spoon and some milk. And you're going to need either another large jug or some glasses to put your finished kefir into. Now when it is done, it is kept in the fridge. That obviously putting it into the cold stops the fermenting. So that is where it is stored. There are a few ways you can make kefir in terms of what you make it with. Now the best thing to make it with, in my opinion, is milk, fresh milk. Uh, either cow's milk or goat's milk, you can use sheep milk. Uh, we have tried making it before with um, boxed milk, like long life boxed milk, and it just didn't go well. The, the, the kefir grains didn't grow, they didn't produce, and we, we never used it again. However, some people um, do use uh, water to make it or coconut water. Uh, personally, I've never tried it. Um, but I have been told that you probably don't get as many, um, as much as the goodness from it by using water. So we stick with using, we use cow's milk and this is what we've always used. Like I said, we use the long life box milk and it just didn't work. The grains never grew. So we didn't use that for long. <laughs> we quickly went back to using cow's milk. So let's get started. Okay, so this one has been sat in the fridge for a few days and this one is ready to be made because we've used up all the kefir in the fridge. So it's time to make some more. So this has been in here for a few days. I'll show you what it looks like on top. You see you've got some liquid that separates on top. If I just get a spoon, I'll show you. You get this thick thick yogurt consistency on top and what we do is we give this all a good mix before we start um, sieving it through to make our kefir. See how thick that is? There we go. Like I said it is like a yogurt but a thinner consistency. Okay so you need to give this a good mix through and then we'll grab our jug and our funnel and our sieve. There we go. See that big clump? <laughs> like I said, it does grow quickly. The grains will multiply. Um, sometimes what we do with the grains, if there's too many, we will blend them up and put them into um, like milkshakes or smoothies and things like that. Sometimes we do just eat the grains off the spoon, but we don't do that very often. And sometimes we do, our dogs like them, so we give them a few. So let's get this sieved. Okay, so all we do is we get our kefir from the fridge and we just pour this through because we want to catch all the grains and then the kefir drink uh, flows through the the sieve because we don't want any of the kefir grains into our final product. So we just whoop, we fill this up. Oh, I'm spilling it. The kefir grains went in too quick. So I'll just lift that up. There we go. And you just move the kefir grains around to let the um, the kefir sieve through. It doesn't take very long to do. I probably set aside like 15 minutes to do two of these um, big jugs. I need to get a larger uh, jug really. I want um, I smashed it <laughs> and this is the only one we've got left at the minute. So we do need to invest in a larger jug because that will make it a lot quicker. Like you can see, I have got mess down here and I usually do make mess when I make it because it tends to spill over. I could be a lot more careful, I guess, but I like to just get it done. So there, that is the first bit sieved. So what I like to do now is just empty this into a jug that I'm going to put into the fridge. So I just swap that over and then I'll grab my jug and I'll transfer that because this is going back into the fridge to drink. 
There we go. I'll leave that there because I'll be filling it again. And then we just put our funnel and our sieve back in. The grains are still in there. We leave them in there until we finished. Then we just add some more and we keep going until it is all empty. I won't add so much this time. I don't want it to over spill everywhere. Yeah, you just use your spoon to move the grains around just to help the, the kefir flow through better. Kefir has got quite a unique smell to it. You know it's kefir. Like I said, it is just like yogurt, but with a more sour taste to it. Add some more in. Lift this up, it might help it go through quicker. There we are. Oops. Like I said, we have been making this for a long, long time. And we keep saying we're going to make some cheese with it. We haven't done that yet. We have made um, bread because it is fantastic. I've never made sourdough. I was put off by getting the starter yeast all started, the starter culture for making sourdough. So I was looking online and I heard that you could make pretty much the same thing, but using the kefir grains for bread. And that is what I've done. And it makes a fantastic bread. I make it into, I've done it into like baguettes, like soft um, sandwich rolls. And it is really, really good. So that is one thing extra that we do with it. Like I said, we would love to make some cheese. So this jug is quite full now, so I'm just gonna scrape off the kefir. And then I'm gonna get another, some glasses to pour this into. I need to find another jug really. Let me see if I can get one. Okay, so I'll just add a little bit more to this jug. I've just washed another one. So there's that one. And we'll fill this one up as well. Hopefully that will be enough to take the rest of it. Okay, so back to the same process. We put our funnel and our sieve in. And then we're just doing the last of it now. That is all the grains out. Just give it a shake and then I'll just um, help work the, the kefir through. What I like to do now is, because it's almost all through, this is a good time to get this jug rewashed so we can get the kefir grains back in and make the kefir again. Okay, so we've just given our jug a quick wash. That is clean for putting the grains back in in just a minute. So let's just scrape off the rest of the kefir. That is just about done. And then I just go underneath with the spoon to scoop off any more. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'll just move this here and we'll get our clean jug. Just wipe this kefir off. There we go. So we've got our clean jug and then all we're going to do is pour the grains back in. And that is how much grains has come out from that batch. So let's get them in. The next part is really simple. All we do is fill it up with some milk. So we've got our cow's milk and then we just, I'll have to fill this up as well. <laughs> we'll have to fill the milk jug up because we need to fill it up to just underneath the, the spout there. So let me just grab another milk. Okay, so I've just opened another bag of milk and we're just going to pour it straight in. Might even have to open another one. 
And it's as simple as that. You put your grains in here and you top it up with milk. You give it a stir, put the lid on, and then we just leave it on the side for about 24 hours until it's fermented. And then we put it back into the fridge. Yes, I'm gonna to have to open another bag of milk. Okay, so let's just top this up. Like I said, I'm only gonna go just below this spout because when it ferments, it does rise up with the grains and it can spill over. So we wanna leave at least a good inch there. There we go. So we'd grab our spoon, we'll give this a quick mix. Get those grains all mixed into the milk and that is just about it so we've got our lid put our lid back on and that is it a new batch of fresh kefir this will just go onto the side in our kitchen and that'll take about 24 hours we'll give it a stir uh, maybe once or twice through the day and then tomorrow morning we will check on it, give it another stir. And if it's all looking good, it just goes into the fridge until we're ready to make it again. So now that it's done, we need to add the rest of this kefir to our jug and then get all of this into the fridge. So I'm just going to get rid of this a sec. And then we'll add the rest of the kefir to here. all out and there we have plus what's in the fridge our fresh new batch of kefir to drink so let's get this in the fridge so we have it all in the fridge um, personally I only like to have um, a couple of small um, mouthfuls through the day I'll have some in the morning and then some in the evening whereas my husband and son um, they will drink a full glass of one of these. <laughs> it just depends. Sometimes it can make you a little bit gassy. That is why I like to space it out through the day and I'll have maybe like an inch or so in the morning and then an inch in the evening because it can make you a little bit gassy. Um, it doesn't affect my husband. He can just drink a big glass but for me, I like to have um, it spread out through the day. Oh, the alarm's going off for the fridge. Let's turn that off. Oh, there we go. So yeah, that will stay in the fridge until it is all being drunk by the family. So let's go and put our fresh batch on the side. Okay, so this is our two new fresh batches of kefir. Now these are gonna stay out for about 24 hours to ferment. And like I said, you need to leave about an inch gap because during the fermentation, the, it will expand. The grains will come to the top and it does sometimes overflow if you fill up too much with the milk. So we've learned that a good inch gap is perfect and you shouldn't get any spillage. So we will check on these later on and we'll give them a stir. We'll mix the grains around. But other than that, we just leave it on the side and then we'll pop it in the fridge tomorrow and it is as easy as that guys so yeah you've seen how quick and easy it is to make your own kefir at home and like I said homemade is going to be far more beneficial to you than the store-bought ones that you get with all the different flavors and things in you can't beat fresh homemade kefir I'll have to show you I'll have to film making the kefir bread because that is really good and for me personally, I've never made sourdough, but I always get put off by uh, having to feed the yeast and getting the starter kit all done. That has put me off from doing it. So that is why I tried the kefir. Doing the bread was a fantastic way of using the kefir and it is full of goodness for you. Like I said, I'm not going into too much of the science and the benefits of kefir because I think that's down to you to um, research it yourself if you think it will benefit you in any way um, but for us we really really enjoy it and we feel that there is good benefits to having this on a daily basis but that is down to you to find out for yourself so once again thank you very much for joining me in the kitchen today I hope you've learned something new and 
maybe it's inspired you to make your own kefir. If you do make it, then you'll have to let me know how it goes. Thank you so much for joining me in the kitchen. Um, go and hit that subscribe button if you feel like it. I'd really appreciate it. And you can stay up to date with any new content that we are putting out there for you. And apart from that, I hope you have a fantastic day. And I will see you next time. Bye. Thank you.